annual Wall Street Jazz Festival. Yeah. I'd like to introduce the man who made it all possible, John Bellotti. about the Wall Street Jazz Festival to me was A, the setting, which was adorable because right. Kingston is, an, is a quaint, it's a quaint old part of the town and it's right. adorable. There'd be a, you know, a drive, a drive in a bandstand at one of those portable bandstands. Right. Everybody would bring their chairs and sit in the street and enjoy jazz for hours, all, all afternoon, mm -hmm. all day. It was out on the street and it was free. To me, the Wall Street Festival was always like a, a giant party. It just had the best feeling. I guess I'm just a lucky so and so. food, hanging out with the other, <laughs> That's <laughs> hanging, hanging out with the musician, you know, the people made homemade food. It was great. was always Peggy's Estrella Latin Jazz. So all, they all picked up their chairs and put them aside and everybody just danced their asses off in the street. It, it is indelibly etched in my mind how charming that scene was. With, with everybody really 
partying together and just having a great time and the band was just throwing down and just you know it was it just really a joy a joyous festival Diverse types of jazz, right? Of music, like yeah. you know, it's it. You don't want it to be the same thing, or right. you don't want it to be all the same ages, right? You know, you don't want a bunch of you know only older people or only younger people. You know, right. I, I want to. I want to. I like to hear it mixed up. a jazz festival because it was started when at, at a time when uh, women were completely unrepresented in, in right. jazz festivals so and I'm and I'm a jazz pianist so it, you know it certainly came from a jazz place in New York and then you know when when I got here I decided to mix it up because I mm -hmm. so admired what you were doing I remember you saying to me as you I, and we didn't know each other very well, but I sure felt you. You said, I can't go on after, after what I just heard. So you probably went from Western Swing and you get deeper into it. And your grandfather certainly was was a jazz fiddler. Oh, yeah, um, totally. really lit him up. 
we had this Thursday night that we did at Wero's before I even moved to Austin. And it's kind of like where I learned to play. And um, it's just, there's just nothing better than getting to make music with your family. Uh, Especially when your grandpa's Johnny Kimball. <laughs> right. just trying to do everything I could to be one of the guys. Show the guys that I could be as rowdy and crazy as they could be. Just to kind of, you to know. To fit in. To fit in and also to not get fucked with. <laughs> and feel equal. We all did stuff like that. That year that I got to play Lulu was really beautiful. Oh, it was so much fun and so vibrant. And then Sarah played, I forget her last name. Cas Caswell. Caswell. Sarah, Sarah Caswell. Oh my gosh. Incredible. That I just was frozen to my seat. I was never the lone female in our high school jazz band, but um, yeah, again, we we did notice that we were in in the minority. It wasn't until you would go to some of the regional uh, jazz festivals where you would see um, bands that had no women, no girls right. in there at all, and that was was always a bit of a oh wow, okay, I guess yeah, this isn't sort of a <laughs> an across the board thing as far as women participating in these band programs. I remember feeling very objectified and also I'm, I am a vocalist but annoyed that that was the first assumption is that I'm a jazz musician so I must be a singer. We were children, you fought my battles, taught me patience. could hurt us we had each other somehow i thought you would away how do we change the environment so that women can see other women on stage doing this art form and not feel as though they're defying what's, what expectations people have of them to be doing this music that there's a place for them however you identify we're not there yet we're not quite there yet. And thank goodness for Lulu Fest. There's such a beautiful sisterhood in a way that comes out when you have all these women on stage. There's a shared language that we speak. What I've always known since picking up my violin is that this was my primary musical voice. That that the violin is is where I feel the most myself and the most in tune with the world. And you know, as a shy kid growing up, I didn't you know I always kind of I don't I, was, I didn't say much. <laughs> but um, when I had the violin in my hand, it just felt like you know I had ultimate freedom. And I think that was definitely taken to another level when I started to uh, to study jazz. The emotions that you feel in the room or the vibe that's in the air, that just was the ultimate chance for me to really just break free.
Unfortunately, I think it is necessary to have festivals featuring women band leaders because there is not a level playing field um, in the general realm of jazz festivals. In fact, to the to the degree that I've heard people say that um, you know, they were applying or someone was applying for <clears throat> them for a festival. And they said, oh, no, we already have a woman band leader. No. I think at a certain age, I just fell off the map. You go through life and you're a musician and then in your 50s and 60s, you're sort of, you know, you're sort of scrapping along and if you live long enough, then you're a legend. <laughs> right, it's true. I just see that if I just stick to my guns and do what pleases me, I have to trust that I will be led in a direction where other I will find the people that would also like that. <laughs> I'm in Southwest Minnesota. Which is what? <laughs> it's all cornfields, all cornfields. I know, and there's so much space in this country. You wonder why people fuss all the time. <laughs> I will say it shifted once I got to college. That's when I, people started saying to me, oh, you're strange. You're a woman who plays drums. And I didn't appreciate that because for me, I thought, well, why wouldn't I play the drums? This is what I do. This is. The, mo the most natural thing I do in my life is when I'm sitting behind the drums. Oftentimes I'm just not heard solely on what I'm playing. There's always a visual element to it that is taken into account. Right. Right. And right. there's yeah. a judgment made if if someone hasn't heard me play yet or they don't know who I am, there's always a judgment made before they hear me. You gotta cut your teeth. There's no way to play this music just learning in a practice room. You know, or there's no way to play this music just learning in school. Right. This music isn't taught in school. It's only in the last forty years has it been taught in school. But like you know, you have to get on the bandstand and get your butt kicked and get mentored by great master musicians. And that's the problem for women is that we're often not even considered for those gigs. Right. 
then we don't get the opportunity to develop our craft and develop our artistry. And then next thing you know, we're just, you know, scraping, trying to make a living. Anyway, yeah, like I just started my own band so I could get myself out there, you know, and not be tied to what other other people's destiny, you know, I wanted to do it and I wanted to work and I wanted to be able to express myself as exactly who I wanted to be. I had to. <laughs> um, number one, uh, when you write music, it's hard to get it played unless you have your own band, right? As you know. Um, and then there were just, I, I had my own uh, concept. I mean, I, I played with many other, I was a side musician for many, many bands, but uh, early on in college, I became a band leader because there were gigs to be had. There were opportunities out there to play uh, on the radio, to play festivals, to play in restaurants, uh, to play concerts. And I wanted to do those. Mm -hmm. So it, there really wasn't any choice. If you look at the pictures of orchestras and uh, and even chamber groups, you know, from days gone by, um, it was mostly men. But that started to change, I believe, when uh, blind auditions came. But in jazz, you see a lot of this kind of cherry picking. You know, let me let me pick my boys, let me yeah. pick my guys. You know, and then so then the same thing happens. It ends up to be one chick in the band, you know. There's still plenty of good old boy jazz bros and, you know, um, uh, ha things happening that are, are disappointing uh, online in terms of, of bullying and, and uh, name calling and that kind of thing. But, but what I'm finding is that there's m many more people willing to step up and step in and say, not, not on my watch, that's not gonna happen. I wanna be no one but me. I'm in love with the lover who likes me the way I am. But he won't do well. Hear my faults, he likes my faults. So I may not be bright, he may not be bright. But he thinks I'm brave. That's great. My mother and father sang all the time together, and as a family, there were 10 of us uh, kids, so uh, we were 12, 12 people trying to live together. We really had to uh, find ways to compromise and to manage the energy, and music turned out to be just such a great way to do that. There was never a question of like, well, maybe you should do accounting or do something, you know, more practical. My parents considered it to be as sacred as being a doctor or a nurse or anything in the healing profession. There was really a lot of respect for that calling. Oh, 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 oh. 
time in backward looks. When I first heard jazz and I started to improvise and take solos, it, it occurred to me that I, I, I might have picked up a horn, but it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't work for me then. I mean, I didn't hear many, many women uh, instrumentalists yeah. except piano players, of course. Mm -hmm. you know? I started to musically do the same things that horn players do. I didn't want to be like a horn, but that's what I had. It was the yeah. music didn't have a, a lyrics or anything, and I was just equal. <laughs> Later, I have to say, and I don't know when it was, but there was a point when I would go hear music, and it was a real, it seemed bizarre to me. There were all men up there. More Lulu Fest, but also a day off. And right after it, it was pretty large, and already it's gone back. I, I open certain jazz magazines, and still, I look at things, and it's still a lot of men, male representation. So, um, it's slow, I think it's, I mean. Now are you big wheels, with all your big deals? You're gonna need your so when you see your festival, they see women that really lead the band. That's their stuff. It's either it's their music or their arrangements or they're really leading it. Whatever instrument didn't right. matter. What instrument? Right. The year that Ingrid Jensen played with her her d daughter in her arms, huh? the daughter was on her, right. either on the back or on the front, yeah. I forget. And she was playing with her band on right. the festival. Right. I mean, that was such a personal touch for one, a gorgeous, yeah. beautiful, bringing her into the music. And then he was, you know, just doing what she would normally do on a bandstand. You know, she even bent down to get it, and she's holding her baby, get the trumpet, and then get up there and just, well, I was just like, wow. I mean, yeah, yeah and, and you don't see that. I've never seen that at any other festival. This generation, that when they're my, are my age, maybe uh -huh. that that next generation, then it's really gonna happen. I think. Yeah. I, at least I can sort of see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, well, that is just so positive I, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing a 
generation or two before me and then to mine and then sort of looking forward a little uh -huh. it, it could probably happen in the next yeah couple yeah. of generations yeah okay festivals it's still you know for instrumentalists that don't sing it's mm. still, you know way more men than women right so it just is it's just a fact um, right and or in and all a, a lot of festivals there's just less females right. and in my record collection there's just one shell one little cube here yes. with female artists you know that's it's wild I keep them all together <laughs> so that they can talk and figure yeah, it out together they like, can commiserate they yeah. can hang out oh nice oh that was great isn't that pretty it made my ear itch it is different it is different that's why I always I always kind of laugh when people say oh is it you know, do you play like a guy or, you know, like, is your music? And I'm like, no, my music is uniquely me and I'm not a man, <laughs> you know? It's not just spang, spang, lang, swing it. It's like all, it's like a big melting pot of all the genres put together. And I think that that gives, because it, because people are more open-minded to that now, they're not trying to say, this is what jazz is and that's not jazz. That is, has been, op that's opened up the, environment for women, definitely. Because we're not making traditional music, we never have. Street was 
jammed with people, jammed with people. It was a gorgeous summer evening and the music had been fabulous and we were coming to the end of the festival. And I said, at, on the microphone, I said, and, and look at that full moon coming up right at the end of Wall Street. Could anything be more moving and more perfect than that? And somebody goes, that's, that's not the full moon, Peggy. That's the, the, the light in front of the bank down there. <laughs> 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 to me, it was always the full moon. <laughs> right we use these illusions that we see around us and that we hear around us, and we put those in our music. So it's all about uh, impressions. Maybe when you're younger, you're like all about making a living and this and that, but now we're very focused on meaning and so everything that we do has to have meaning to us or else we don't want to do it right and we don't need to do it right and we don't do it that women are coming up with, um, the women I know in the business, it's more of their voice. I think I really, really wanted to, to power through tunes and be like a, the guys played. They played differently than, than what my heart would have originally done. And now I'm brave enough to do something more me. A lion in a strong, a curse it is cast. So one now will lead her be fast as the present now will lead her be past, I swear. And the order is rapidly fading. And the first one now will lead her be last for the times they are changing. <laughs> Changing. 